Okay, so it wasn't a completely bad episode, but this is without question the least exciting and most disappointing episode that we've had this season. And it is not because, or just because, Candace left. If anything, that's actually the least annoying out of all the dislikes, okay? Because not only Candace leaving the negative factor, the fact that the returnees are chewing on Brad really doesn't make any sense because they should actually be hoping that he goes because one, given the treatment that they've done to Candace and echoing what everyone on After Buzz, Rob Sestadino, Dr. Ross, and Candace herself has said, nobody wants to play with Candace. And that if Brad would go, Monica would be more willing to ally with the returnees. So, what the heck is up with that? Also, it was completely obvious that the loved ones were going to win this challenge. Even though I predicted it last week, this editing made it so bleeding obvious, like the challenge. It wasn't even exciting, really. The only exciting parts were... Uh, Venus versus Aris, again. Uh, really? And even when the loved ones win, I'm just like, yeah. Well, what? You guys have been losing for so long, and, and you finally win, but you're just like, oh, yeah, we won. Okay, moving on. Really? <sighs> and then the blind side, this um, episode, sure, it's sh shocking, but barely. I mean, like, we knew it was going to be 8 to 1 for a Laura, but we just didn't know which Laura. They focus on Rupert's wife for so long that we all think it's going to be her, and then they're like, oh, we'll just make it clever, and then we'll just switch it over to Laura M. Uh, uh, really? It came out of nowhere, but is it shocking? No. And to everyone out there who's saying that the blind sides of John and Brad are shocking, they aren't, okay? Trust me. John being blindsided like that, we should have been able to see that coming a mile away before we went into tribal. You shouldn't have even thought that Sierra was likely to go. And then Brad being blindsided like that, we knew that was going to happen eventually. We just didn't know when. So really, there hasn't been any shocking blindsides this season except for Candace, because when you think about it, Rupert's wife, that's actually pretty obvious. Hmm? I hope my voice doesn't sound too bad. I've had a sore throat all day. Ugh. So the Redemption Island duel, that's the second time I've been disappointed by this duel, because when they did a duel like this in South Pacific, the person I wanted to see win, Michaela, didn't win there either, so I've been twice disappointed by this duel. It sucks. But I should, but I did have a feeling that this was going to happen because, unlike Marissa, there's a lot more to Brad and just... Yeah, I had a feeling that he was going to leave one of them in the dust, and this time, John completing his thing before Candace was able to finish. Well, given how formidable Brad is, and given how much Candace says he's good at puzzles, it makes more sense this time that he would try and rush through. But Candace is also right in her after-show bit with Pav. No one has anything against John, really. It's just the fact that he didn't do that great of a job of communicating to his alliance. If he gets back in the game somehow, he has a good chance of continuing on if he gets accepted immediately. In my eyes, of course. And then it also drove me nuts that uh, the returnees were chewing on Brad because there's two reasons for that. One, I understand that you are trying to, you know, do that so Michaela feels better, but shouldn't you actually be thinking that uh, Brad ad is something that somebody that Michaela is gonna, I mean, Monica, sorry, is gonna hop over to, so, you know, it just doesn't really make any sense. And then even later, they're all thinking that, so just... Yeah, it totally made me want them to lose the challenge even more, because before this episode aired, I'm like, I want them to lose the challenge, but that's just because the editing is making it obvious, but after what they did at the Redemption Night Show, I'm like, oh no, now I want you to lose the challenge for supporting the idiot. Well, not a complete idiot, but just, he behaves like one. Yeah. 
Alright, so then the loved ones win the challenge, and like I said, they don't do that great of a job itself, but even the wee toadies in Ruben's life, they're just like, yeah, pff, whatever. Come on, really? And then, there's the discussions between which lore to go. I was hoping that they get word of lore M, because after Monica, lore M is the attorney that I'm not interested in at all. So, when she left, I just go, hmm, no big deal. So, what happens next week? Well, obviously, they're going to switch things up. Then, the bit where Tyson and Jervis are talking, well, here's the big question. Obviously, they're talking about Aris, but are they talking about it before things get switched up or after things get switched up? Because if they're talking about it after things get switched up, that means that they'll be going to Tribal Council and that Aris is still with them and then they're probably going to get rid of him. If they're talking about it before things get switched up, who gives about this clip? It's not that important. For my eyes. As for the attention, I would do Lore and Go. Seriously. I mean, like... We have no camera time with her. I felt the same thing about Rachel when it was Candace, Rachel, and Marissa. I predicted that Rachel was going to go because least amount of camera time. And there you go. So, I think that's really all there is to mention about this episode, and... Yeah, bye.